Today is Septuagesima Sunday here in this little home here in Nashville, Tennessee. The epistle is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Catholics in Corinth. So these people were very familiar with the Olympic Games. That's why St. Paul will make reference to uh, racing. Brethren, know you not that they that run in the race all run indeed, but one receives the prize. So run that you may obtain, and every one that strives for the mastery refrains himself from all things, and they indeed that they may receive a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible one. I therefore so run, not as at an uncertainty, I so fight, not as one beating the air, but I chastise my body and bring it into subjection, lest perhaps when I have preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. For I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all in Moses were baptized in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, and they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. But with most of them, God was not well pleased. The Holy Gospel. Taken from St. Matthew chapter 20. At that time, Jesus spoke to his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like to a, ha a father of a family who went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And having agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing in the marketplace idle. And he said to them, Go you also into my vineyard, and I will give you what shall be just. And they went their way. And again he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour, and did in like manner. But about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing, and he said to them, Why stand you here all the day idle? They said to him, Because no man has hired us. He said to them, Go ye also into my vineyard. And when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and pay them their hire, beginning from the last even to the first. When therefore they were come, that came about the eleventh hour, they received every man a denarius. But when the first also came, they thought that they should receive more, and they also received every man a penny. And receiving it, they murmured against the master of the house, saying, These last have worked but one hour, and thou hast made them equal to us, that have borne the burden of the day and the heat. But he answering said to one of them, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst thou not agree with me for a penny? Take what is thine, and go thy way. I will also give to this last, even as to thee. Or is it not lawful for me to do what I will? Is thy eye evil, because I am good? So shall the last be first, and the first last. For many are called, but few chosen. Thus are the words of the sacred scripture. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, firstly, by way of announcement, please pray for, you can sit on the floor, pray for the seminarians who will take the cassock this uh, February 2nd and next week. Uh, also, they'll have uh, big midterm exams also this week, so pray for them all to do well. They will have written exams and also oral exams, and um, the, the classes that are studied steadily are um, the Sacred Scripture, the 
apologetics, which is the defense of the faith and the basics of defending the Catholic faith. And uh, they will especially be tested this week on the divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, all the proofs from Scripture and reason that Christ is truly God and not just uh, a good man, as the world is putting him out to be, as even Pope Francis, to great sadness and, and shock and scandal to the whole world, Pope Francis is presenting uh, the one world religion. He's calling it together. You can see the video he put out calling together all the world religions to pull together. This, this is prophesied by St. Pius X. The one world religion will be part of the one world government, which is exactly the, the preparation for the Antichrist. So it's, it's so serious. And as long as these popes refuse to obey the Mother of God and consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, it's just an avalanche downhill. So anyway, so um, they will be studying the divinity of Christ and be tested on this this week. Also, um, of course, Latin and um, logic and basics of philosophy and um, mainly those courses. So pray for the seminarians and um, pray that they persevere. Pray that also um, they will receive tonsure from Bishop Williamson or Bishop Four. Who else can we turn to? Maybe a miracle will, will bring Bishop Tissier. That would be a great thing if Bishop Tissier rose out from his semi-prison. And um, he gave a great sermon, as you know, it's almost a year ago, January 1st in Chicago. And ever since he's uh, been closely watched so he should rise he should rise he knows archbishop lefebvre he knows the mind of archbishop lefebvre he should not be going along with this betrayal to our founder archbishop lefebvre and also to the popes because any of us who if if we accept vatican ii if we accept the new mass and the new sacraments we betray our lord that's the bottom line we crucify our lord we betray him. And Archbishop Lefebvre used to say it. If I ever say Vatican II is okay, or 95% acceptable, and the new Mass is, well, it's okay. It's not the best, but it's okay. You can go to it. Then he said, don't follow me. I have lost it. And I can say the same too. If I ever say Vatican II is not bad, new Mass, oh, it's not so bad, then drive me out of your house here with a pitchfork. Because I've become salt that's lost its flavor. Because the priest, his duty is to hand down, like the Pope and bishops, hand down what Christ taught. Hand down the true faith. Give you the true Mass, which is not the priest. The priest is zero. The priest is just, pardon me, the jackass that carries Christ. He's the jackass with a stole, as we used to be told in our retreats years ago. That's all the priest is. He's just a jackass. And But it's Christ that you must thirst for. It's his doctrine that we must preach. And it's his grace and his sacrifice of the cross that's turned this house into a greater than a cathedral. Because all the angels in the whole area of Nashville are already gathering for the great event of the sacrifice of the Mass here in this little humble home which will draw graces on this home and all of you and on the families. So um, so do pray for our bishops. It is disappointing. It is very disappointing that Bishop Follet has taken this turn of betrayal to Archbishop Lefebvre. It's sad. But he can turn around. He can if we pray. Bishop Galleretta is also going that direction. He's just going along. Bishop Tissier, we hope, will rise. Bishop, Bishop Williamson, of course, was expelled. And uh, he sees the picture. He's been a little weak recently on the question of the new Mass. I don't know why. He knows better. He shouldn't be saying this about it's okay to attend a new Mass if it fulfills your spiritual needs. He knows better than that. Archbishop Lefebvre was very clear. You cannot go to the new Mass. It will poison your soul 
you will lose the faith eventually. It erodes the faith like hydrochloric acid on foam. It just eats it away, or salt on snow. Um, so it's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's also partly a punishment on the whole church. That we have no leaders anymore. It's like, where are the leaders? Where are they? Where's the captains of the army? We're in the middle of a war being bombed and shot at from heaven above and the hell below and all the devils between and all the heresies and all the modernism and all the betrayal of our president to, to, our, to his people, these last presidents, the whole list of them. And uh, the brainwash through the media and the horrible education. Obama has just passed another ESSA law, which is basically heading to stealing your children from your home and putting them through social socialist education. In other words, the enforced brainwash into making generations of children atheists. That's what it is. That's what public school system really means. That's what it does. Just look at the fruits. Anyone who survives public school and still comes out having the faith, that's a miracle, a miracle of God's mercy and grace. <clears throat> so you young, young families, whew, you're going to have to pray that you can keep your children because Obama and the Clinton administration, they, they plan to take them out. And this is what the communists did in communist countries. And they will soon dictate how many children you have. And if you break it, they will uh, have a forced abortion, as they do in China. So we are in rough times. We're in very t tough times, all of us. But our trust is in God, in God who made heaven and earth. And to those who turn to him, he always listens. He always bends down his ear. He knows what we're going to say even before we ask. But he wants us to ask. He wants us to ask. He wants us to love him. He, God hates to be treated like a machine. And you do too, don't you? None of you can stand hours listening to those machines of recordings. And when you get married, you get married to a, not a wall, you get married to a living person who must love you back. That's part of the beauty of marriage. And you expect from your children that, that, if, that, that interchange of love and affection and respect and honor and obedience and humility and forgiveness if we offend. And that's how we are between each other in a family and in society, all the more with God. God is not some just a Coke machine that answers when you press a button. But how many of us have made God into this thing? When today at Mass, God comes down from heaven. The living heart of Jesus is going to pour into your soul all his grace, as much as you want. If you open your the bag of your soul big, he's going to fill it big. If we're stingy and only open a little bit, he'll, he'll fill a little bit. God is all good, and he will give what we ask. Ask, and you will receive. Seek, you will find. But... Part of the problem is we don't really ask with much confidence. And we don't really love our God with all our heart, all our mind, and all our soul. But He's infinite. And God knows these days. He knows what we're in. He could give us a Pius X Pope tomorrow. He can zap Pope Francis dead, get a new Pope somehow, miraculously. There's even prophecies that St. Peter and Paul themselves will come down and elect a new Pope. How's that? God can solve this problem tomorrow. Why doesn't he? Because he wants us to fight. There's a special splendor. There's a special crown in the fight. He wants us to fight. What good is a championship hockey team unless they've had to earn it and go over time and sweat and bleed and work hard for their trophy? And, and what good is a racer, says St. Paul in this Mass? What good is an athlete that just wins a trophy for sitting there? No, it's one that has to work hard and win that trophy. He has to win that incorruptible crown. And Christ wants us to fight. There's a special honor to the saints of our time. 
to you mothers taking all the children that God sends you in a world that spits and is doing everything to kill and stop children. Can you believe this? We live in an age completely twisted. And our, our forefathers, they did everything to have all the children God sent. Everything. Sometimes God didn't send them. And for them, that was a terrible cross. So they would adopt. And believe it or not, when they start adopting, then they find out they can start having children themselves. That does happen. But our age is, wow, it's so perverse, so sick. So what a, what a great thing for you couples and families to take the children God sends you. And the world mocks you. Even relatives mock you. Because they've lost the faith. They don't understand this. But God gave the sacredness of marriage. And he blesses the marriage bed because he wants children. He wants heaven full. And you fathers and you men who work in the world, you happy you when the world promotes dishonesty in business, lying, cheating, cheating on one's wife, and uh, all the filth and filthy talk and jokes and uh, internet access to filth. Happy you when you men resist this whole perverse spirit of the world and are honest in business and keep God's commandments because we fear God's chastisements who can cast not only the body into fire but the soul into eternal fire. Yes, we need to have that healthy fear of God. Yes, God is infinitely merciful in all love. It is true. But we must not forget he is also all justice. And if I spit at him and persist in spitting and mocking him, I will be smashed and burnt forever. We don't mock God, but our age mocks God. It's calling down fire from him. Our Supreme Court of the United States mocks God openly, spits and laughs at him. And the Judeo Masons, of course, finance all this and promote it. And it brings down from heaven a great chastisement on our country. That's why the crazy weather. That's why the increase of sinkholes. In Florida, one guy in his house was just found gone. The whole house was still there, but his bedroom was gone. A sinkhole swallowed him in his bed in his, house, his room. And cars are swallowed up, like the sons of Korah rising up against God and Moses. They were swallowed up by the earth. And the, all the idiot modernists were saying, well, the Bible is just speaking poetically. It didn't really happen. No, no, no. Now we're seeing sinkholes are not some fiction. They are more and more, and God is, is speaking to this age. Because he's about to pull out the big paddle. And it's going to sting. But God is very slow to anger. So he's, gonna, he's sending these tornadoes, these earthquakes, this crazy weather. Now they, they hear screaming and strange no noises and blasts in the air. You can, the, the ABC, Fox News, they're, they're broadcasting this. They have no explanation. But we Catholics do. We know that God is all good, but he's also just. And he's not mocked. And we know there's four sins that cry to heaven for vengeance. What are they? We know this from our catechism and from the scriptures. You, and you can drive, you can fly out to Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> Try to find a weed that even grows there. Try to find a rat that even lives there. Nothing. It was so severely punished. Sodom and Gomorrah. Nothing till today can grow there. It's dead. It's dead. So sodomy is one of the worst. It's one of the it's one of the big sins that cries to heaven for vengeance. And it's oh it's awful. Now it's being promoted in more and more in the movies, the music, commercials, TV programs, the children in the school, public school kids now. Who do they hire to teach them? Open perverts. And that's their teachers. You don't think this provokes the anger of God when he says, Woe to you who scandalize these little ones. Our Lord loves the innocence of children. 
Woe to you who scandalize one of these little ones. Better that a millstone be tied around their neck and thrown to the bottom of the sea. And what's our public school and college system waiting for? All these professors, there's going to be a ton of, ton of millstones on the last day. And they'll be cast into the sea of fire. Whoa, says our Lord, is, he is more angry than a mother bear when someone tries to attack her cub. And he, sent, he mentions that in the scriptures. My anger is enkindled like a, like a bear. So, sodomy. Secondly, murder, abortion. This can move one to tears. Just look on Planned Parenthood. Look on what this good Catholic man has revealed about Planned Parenthood, how they sell the body parts. And it's, it's just unbelievable this is happening. And uh, you, can, you should, should hear the recent talk of Dr. White in Washington, D.C. Just look that up. Listen to the talk. It's about an hour. It's frightening. All this blood of these innocent children. Well, they're not innocent. They're born in original sin. But it's still blood that cries to heaven for vengeance. As Cain, when he killed his brother Abel, what did God say, remember? He said, Cain, the blood of your brother cries out to me from the earth. You don't think all these, what is it, 1.2 to 1.3 billion babies massacred since 1920 in Russia? Russia was the first to spread her errors throughout the world, calling it a blob. In 1973 in this country, uh, it's unspeakable. 9,000 abortions, only it, it, just in the time when Pope Francis arrived in the United States on our soil during his visit, 9,000 abortions. Did he say anything against it? Did he give it to the Supreme Court? Did he slam the president for such a atrocity, for infanticide, legalized? Not a word. Not a word. Just worry about the ecology and the environment and pollution of the uh, trees and the ocean. You don't think this angers God? You don't think this provokes the anger of Almighty God and His justice? Whew, what are we in for? Abortion and murder. W willful murder. That's one of the other sins that cries to heaven for vengeance. I won't go into the, uh, the dark side of Washington's mass murders in the Middle East. Third, uh, depriving workers of their lawful wages. That's another one of the heaven, the vengeances, sins that cried a heaven for vengeance. Because family men, especially fathers of families, they need a just wage. The women should not have to leave their home and work. The popes have spoken against this. The, spoke, the popes, the good popes, like Pius XI, and Pius IX have condemned this idea. But you know who runs the finances. And they want, they have deliberately said in the protocols of Zion, we will get the woman out of the home and put her in pants and degrade her. The devil has a great hatred for the woman because the woman and the man can co-create with God. In the, in the sacredness of the marriage unity, they, pro they pro provide the matter, and God infuses the soul. So three of them co-cooperate. Something the, the fallen angels can never do. Create something new? And a new angel? They cannot create a new angel. But a, a blessed and a, a happy marriage couple, or even unhappy, with many tears and crosses, but at, but at peace, they can co-cooperate with God. To bring a new child and many children into this world who will live forever. They will never die. Once they have a soul, it's forever in heaven or forever in hell. This is amazing to the angels, especially to the devils. So, of course, they have to attack the woman. Because the woman, in a way, has more power than they. She can bring children. The devils can't make more angels. They can't. So, it's amazing what God has given us. So, uh, robbing workers of their wages, 
pulls down the anger of God also. Because it's wrong that the women have to work. And it's the finances and the economy is not that difficult that the men get enough money that the women can stay home with children. But our media, we are so brainwashed by Hollywood, by Fox News, by all this perverse um, movies. We're so brainwashed that even if the women could stay home today and have all the children God sends, more than 99% of them would not even want to do that. In the Western world, they would spit on that. We want to work. We want to wear pants. We want to be like men. We want to be equal. It's total lies. And it's ruined our poor ladies. It's ruined our women. It's ruined them. And men know instinctively there's a beauty, there's a dignity to a woman who is feminine, who dresses feminine, who dresses modestly, who has a certain reserve, has certain beauty that reflects the mother of God. There, there is something about a woman that is just something brings a man to awe when they're really women. And the devil knows this, and the media knows this, and the Judeo Masons know this. That's why they're going to drag our women to the mud. Fourth sin that cries to heaven for vengeance. What is it? It is the willful oppression of the poor. The willful oppression of the poor. And this is another whole this is another whole book of explanation, but put very simply, we have the encyclical Rerum Novarum. We have the encyclical Quadragesimo Anno of Pope Pius XI, when they spoke about the economic question and how the economics must be guided by justice and charity. And the political order must uphold the politics of Jesus Christ the King. That's what we Catholics are all about. We want the social kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ. And our, our Western world and our beautiful USA is falling to pieces. It is self-imploding because we have never had Christ the King of our nation. It started too with the missionaries. It started. But those missionaries were often killed by the Indians, are snuffed out by the U.S. government in the Northwest with the Indians. <clears throat> and Father DeSmet tried to bargain with these Masons in Washington, D.C., but they totally lied to him. They lied to the Catholic nations and sent in Protestant ministers and sent with their wives and sent in armies to just wipe out whole Catholic nations on our soil. Uh, and then um, the act of secularization in, in California, which drove all the Catholic Franciscans out down back into Mexico. So this country had, we could say the Catholic state in the United States was aborted in 1776. It was aborted and it take, taken over by the Masonic principles. But we're not going to lie down and die. We Catholics, we're going to fight back. We're going to pick up where Father DeSmet left off. We're going to pick up where Father Juniper Serra left off. And the blood of St. Isaac Jogues and St. John de Brebeuf and St. John de Lalanne and all these martyrs. There were over 35 martyrs down in Georgia, Florida, and in that area. There's martyrs all over our country. Down even in New Mexico and Texas. And the first martyr right in the heart of the country, Kansas, Father, Father um, Juan de Padilla, whose body lies incorrupt. He was killed in 1542. His body is still incorrupt. Can you believe that? It's in New, down in New Mexico in the church of St. San Agostino. <clears throat> so that's where we got to pick up. We've had enough of this liberalism, enough of this Freemasonic principles that are destroying our country, Enough of this false separation of church and state, false freedom of the press, freedom of the speech, freedom to teach what you want, because look what it's doing to our youth, destroying them. It's about time we Catholics convert and really profess the Catholic faith that our Lord Jesus Christ is God. He is King. He is the priest. There is no other priest, no other prayer, no other sacrifice pleasing to God than this sacrifice and his cross. There's no other king. 
and no other government unless Christ is king, it's zero. It will self-destruct. Christ said it himself, unless you build on rock, if it's built on sand, it's going to crumble. And we, we got to rebuild our nation. We're going to get punished. But on the other side of that punishment, you men and you ladies, we got to have our heads straight. That Christ must be his name on our constitution. His name written in the, uh, the first sentence of the laws that govern our country. And his heart on our flag. And that's what we want. Because what does that mean, the kingship of Christ? That means we love him and follow willingly him. Because his laws are not heavy. His laws bring freedom. His laws bring blessings. And protects the woman and elevates her, protects the marriage bond in the large family, and protects true education because truth can flourish and children go to school breathing fresh air, learning the, the to truth. And that truth inspires ingenuity, inspires true scientific progress, true progress, not the false atheistic and evolution progress. Our the, the whatever the opposite of progress it's the op opposite the catholic faith where it touches there it flourishes the arts the education the the architecture the music just look at the high catholic catholic ages what they produced people spend every year to go to europe they spend thousands and thousands of dollars to visit what all the ancient and medieval churches monasteries, to see the statues, relics, to see the beautiful uh, Pieta carved by a Catholic, Michelangelo, all the icons, all the artworks. People love this, but they're not going over there to see the Buddhas, the ugly stone and the horrible Hindu gods caked with human hearts all over them and promoting monkeys and rats and vice and immorality. So you see, when we profess Christ the King, that means everything. Christ, as St. Bernard said, his name is honey in my mouth, joy in our heart, light to our mind. There is no other. And it's, 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 his, it's Christ, Christ as King. And not not the distorted Christ, as the Protestants would have it. But there are many Protestants in the United States who will make good Catholics, who will make better Catholics than most of us. And it's, all, it's a lot of the Protestants who are on the question of creation and smashing evolution and fighting evolution in the schools, fighting it in the public domain, while we Catholics... We're worried about the, the drapery on our windows. We've completely lost the fight. And we have the popes who held it up before us. So, dear faithful, let's not be tepid. Our Lord, in this introit of the Mass, Septuagesima means 70. And Septuagesima is partly symbolized by the 70 years of the Babylonian captivity of the Israelites. And this prefigures the Catholic Church, which will be sometimes reduced to a severe captivity on earth. The Catholic Church will be humiliated. The Catholic Church will be hijacked, infiltrated as at Vatican II. The Catholic Church will be reduced to the introit of this Holy Mass, Septuagesima. The introit says, Circum de dero me gemitus mortis. The, the groans of death. The sorrows or the groans of death surrounded me. This is the state of the Catholic Church right now. This is the state of the resistance. This is the state of all traditional Catholics who are trying to keep the faith now. The sorrows of death surround me. The sorrow of hell encompassed me. The sorrow of hell encompassed me. We turn to the Pope, 
give us bread, he gives us rocks. We turn to our local bishops, please give us eggs, and they give us scorpions. We look, turn to the four bishops, or consecrated by Archbishop Lefebvre, give us the true doctrine. The only one that's come close to it is Bishop Williamson. And he, even he has recently wavered on the new mass, but all right, let's hope it's just a stupid mistake and he can repair it by a good letter next week. And even Bishop Follet can turn around. And even Bishop Tissier can rise up. And they should. These, these men were consecrated not to be hiding the light under a bushel, but to proclaim the Catholic faith and to protect the Catholic tradition. And as Archbishop Lefebvre told them, hold fast, stay united in the faith, and keep the fight, and don't compromise with modernist Rome until we have a perfectly Catholic Pope. That's what he told them. So, here we are. This is our state right now. The sorrows of death surrounded me. The sorrow of hell has encompassed me. And in my affliction, I called upon the Lord. So that's where we are now. We cry to heaven by our prayers, our daily rosary, our penances, the tears of this life. And he heard my voice from his holy temple. So there is the great promise. God won't leave us hanging. He will answer. He will give you the grace to become saints in this time. And great will be your crown in heaven. Do you ever think of this? We all know it's tough, but you ever think of the crown in heaven for you? When all the saints, many of them before us, they didn't know what it was like to live in a non-Catholic society. They never knew what it was like seeing churches sold off. Their churches were full. Their confession lines were packed. Seminaries were full. Convents full. Monasteries full. They never dreamt of a Supreme Court passing laws against God's laws. So we are really in a tough time, but we are in a time when if we have the grace and God gives us the grace and we humbly beg him, great will be your crown in heaven. Great will be your crown. When you get there, any of you who get to heaven, they're going to pick you up on their shoulders and carry you in triumph. And many saints are going to say, wow, there's the mercy of God. Because if I lived in that time, I probably would have gone to hell. And most do go to hell today. That's a fact. If Our Lady in 1917 can show hell and said, too many are falling in. This is 1917. In our estimate, it's the good old days. <laughs> there was no miniskirts. There was no bad fashion. There was no, you know, bad videos. There was just nothing compared to now. The bad music and bad movies. And yet many souls were fallen to hell. What's happening today? So think of that when you're out in the world. Most people are going to hell. And they don't care. They really don't care. But we still must live the charity of God. We must love God still above all things. And we must love our neighbor and seek the salvation of your neighbor. By your good example, by your words, give a miraculous medal, the green scapular, a catechism, Bottles of holy water, if they have an infestation of the devil, which is happening more and more, and um, crazy things happening, the holy water will drive it away. So let's turn to she who the devils cannot stand. That's one woman the devils really hate, and it's the Blessed Virgin Mary. Because God has given her to crush the, he the devil's head. It's like big Mike Tyson or... Muhammad Ali, you know, every, no, nobody can beat him. They've got all the, the weight golden belts hanging on their walls, tons of them. Nobody ever beat these guys. And yet, imagine one of them stepping in a ring with a, a young, beautiful virgin girl, and she just pounds the daylights out of him and crushes his head. That's the picture. That's why the devil hates her, because God chooses this frail virgin, beautiful among all the women, to crush the proud Lucifer's head. It makes him roar with anger. He, he just hates 
So any of you who are devoted to her with the rosary, he hates it. The scapular, he hates it. Any of you who love the Virgin Mary like our mother, and you want to foster that devotion to her, think of her all the time. Live with her. Ask her to give your heart a little flame of her immaculate heart. You can't measure the, the love that the Virgin Mary had for God. It's, it's immeasurable. Ask her, and she will give it to you, because she's a mother. And mothers, if your children were caught in a storm and you didn't know where they were, you'd be worried. You wouldn't be able to sleep. You'd go crazy. And the mother of God, without losing sleep or going crazy, but she is just and more worried. She wants us in heaven. She knows we're in the we're in a, a, a deadly zone where it can easily fall into hell. So be close to her. She will look after you like a mother. And as St. Ambrose said and St. Bernard, even if a soul who might even have one foot already in hell, if he turns to the Virgin Mary, she will snatch him. She will. So I beg you, pray for a Pope to consecrate Russia, finally. Pray for our four bishops. Pray that they'll just do their duty. Stop playing games with Vatican II and the new Mass. Just stop. Just do your duty. You don't need to please these wretched modernists who are out to destroy the Catholic Church. They know what they're doing, the worst of them. They're paid to do it. The Lodge, they have sacrificed their, sold their soul to the devil to destroy the Catholic Church. You don't make peace. You don't dialogue with these so-and-sos. Why is Bishop Follet wanting to dance with these idiots? Imagine a pro-life group seeking recognition from the local Planned Parenthood. Can you imagine that? And wanting to be recognized and make a deal in agreement with the Planned Parenthood. It's impossible. It's absolutely opposed, contradictory. Planned Parenthood is out to kill the children. Pro-life is to defend them. There is no agreement, no peace possible between them. The only answer is smash Planned Parenthood, destroy it, outlaw it, raise, raise R-A-Z-E, the buildings flat, and fire all the workers. And normally, normally the abortion doctors in a normal society would be publicly executed to teach the whole nation a lesson. You don't kill children, especially in their mother's wombs. What a nightmare. So this is what, what's happening. Why is Bishop Follet seeking an agreement with these destroyers? We have the truth. Not because of us, but because the truth stands on its own. Christ is king. His Catholic Church, his magisterium does not change. And what gives us always great hope is we're going to win. In the long run, we're going to win. The, tri the truth will triumph. Our Lady's victory will come. Either it will come on earth, but sure when we die and hopefully go to heaven. So persevere, little flock. Persevere. Don't be discouraged. Don't be weary. Our Lord knows this is a hard war. That's why he doesn't just sit up there tapping his shoes with his arms folded. He's coming down right now on this altar. The king, the emperor of heaven and earth is coming right down on this altar. He's going to renew the sacrifice of Calvary. You're going to be standing and kneeling before with all the angels and the Virgin Mary. The King himself comes to strengthen you, console you. He becomes your food. What, what, what god of any pagan deities have ever done this? They, they didn't even think of this. It's too impossible. But the true God has thought of it. And so he's going to strengthen you, fill your soul with grace. And console you and wipe away your tears and remind you of the joys of heaven, which is one of the pledges of the Holy Eucharist. It promises you eternal life. So let's eat this living heart of Jesus and ask him and the mother of God to move us to love God above all, to hate what offends God, to love God above all in his holy Catholic truth. And uh, to be stay, stay close to the mother of God who will crush the head of the devil. O Mary conceived without sin. O Mary conceived without sin. O Mary conceived without sin.
name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.